Okay. So try to do it every day, you know, like five minutes in the morning, wake up in the morning, take your shower, go in the, you know, sit in the sun and try to just, you know, chant this OM with this, you know, this is a mudra, this is called Jnana mudra, holding, holding the hands like this, you know, fingers like this. Mm-hmm. It's called Jnana mudra, this way. Just this way, sitting in this way, you know, uh, in the Jnana mudra, try to chant this OM and try to connect with that OM from within. So last, uh, last week we had discussed about Yama. That is the first one of the Ashtanga, uh, Ashtanga uh, Yoga, you know, that is the eight limbs of yoga. The first one was Yama. The second is Niyama. So this Yama and Niyama, they, they help our mind become attuned with the, uh, you know, attuned with the journey that is going to commence. And this journey is going to take us beyond this time and space into this, you know, into, into this eternity, into this, you know, into this consciousness, absolute consciousness. And when we reach that absolute consciousness, that, that point or that state is called the last one, that is Samadhi, where everything is in equilibrium. Here, when I see, I see things big and small, high and low, likings and dislikings, love and hate. Everything is, you know, different. Everything is distinct. There's no sameness. So, you know, from this difference, from this difference, from this, from this difference, to come to that point where there is oneness. But this oneness is called Samadhi. When I reach into the state of Samadhi, I see everything to be the same. Everything is consciousness. There is no darkness, there is no light. There is no good, there is no bad. There is no virtue, there is no vice. Everything is the same. Everything is the same. Everything is the face of the Lord. Everything is the face of the divine. So that, you know, this is, is you know, this is what we, we, we experience in the state of Samadhi. So now let us talk about Niyama. So like Yama, Niyama also is five. The first thing, the first one is, the first one in Niyama is called Socha, that is purity. You know, when we talk about purity, you know, it's not only the purity of the body, like we need to take a shower. So here it says that you should take a shower. You should keep your body clean. You should sanitize nowadays in this Corona, you know, in this, in this, uh, in this time of Corona, we are all very clean. We are all sanitized. So it says that, you know, the body should be clean. The body should be sanitized. Not only the body, the mind should also be clean. When we talk about Shaucha, it only it it doesn't only mean about the cleanliness of the body. It also talks about the cleanliness of the mind, of the intellect and the ego. It says the clean mind, the pure mind, the pure intellect and the pure ego, the pure mind, the pure intellect and the pure ego is the pure consciousness. You know, that means the mind that we have, you know, this mind is impure. Why? Because this mind is a, it is a complex compound of matter and consciousness. Matter means things which are not me. Like the body. The body is not me. It's my body. It's something different from me. But in the mind, I have this body. My body, my, my, I have to keep my body like this. I have to keep, you know, I have these concerns about my body. I have these thoughts about my body. So, you know, this body, because it is not me, is a matter. In the same way, you know, this world, this world, everything in the world, my father, my mother, my sister, my brother, my friends, my, my, you know, my, my job, my, uh, my job, my school, my college, my office, 
my you know my my car everything everything which is not me is the matter so this matter is you know combined you know if this matter is combined with consciousness and it stays within me in the in the form of mind so this mind is impure because it it has matter now how to you know how to drive away this matter if i can get rid of this matter from the mind my mind is pure how to get rid of the of this matter from of this matter from my mind the only way is you know to the only way is to practice spirituality the only way is to remind who i am who i am in 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 you know in vedanta there's one word called shoham 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 means i am that i am that consciousness i am not i am not this what i see which one the perception that i have about myself i am the name i am the form this is the perception that i have for myself when i talk about myself i see i say that i am this i am a, i am a name i say my name is samantha or my name is you know uh, samina or my name is cherry so this is this is my name it's not me but when i define myself i define myself as this name that means i have this firm conviction within me that this name is me but i am not this name i consider myself to be this name because of ignorance about my own self now what is how can it go it can only go by the awareness of my own self now what am i i am that i am that why i am that why that does not have any definition why that does not have any definition because that is always beyond that is infinite which cannot be defined anything which can be defined is finite anything which can be expressed is finite when anything which which can be expressed means that comes into your into your perception that comes into your contemplate you can contemplate about it you can perceive about it and when you can perceive about it when you can perceive about something or when you can contemplate about something that is when you can express that you can define that that is a limited entity the unlimited the infinite cannot be contemplated the infinite cannot be perceived the infinite cannot be perceived the infinite cannot be contemplated and because the infinite cannot be contemplated or perceived that cannot be expressed also and because that cannot be expressed that, you know that is why it is it is expressed in this way that i am that that which is always beyond so you know i have to bring this conception about myself i am not this this one that i see i am not this body i am not this name i am not this form i am not this name i am not this form i am not this body i am not this thoughts the thought currents which are always there within me all the time this is not me i am beyond this so when i you know when i remember about my myself i am he i am that i am that show hum show hum all the time i will see my attachment with the matter is becoming is ceasing you know automatically it's an automatic way the more i am aware about myself the more i am aware about who i am i will see my attachment to the matter has is ceasing and as my as the attachment as the attachment to the matter ceases i will see the you know i will see less presence of matter within me and when there will be no attachment at all with the matter then then there is no matter in me i am that pure entity i am that pure consciousness i become the pure consciousness so this is how you know this is one way of getting rid of the matter from the mind 
this is one way by which I can make my mind pure. There's another way. How? You know, if you see, you might have seen, you know, uh, people chant the name of God. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I don't know whether I've seen it, this or not. You know, they chant the name of God. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So while they chant, chant the name of God, their, you know, their focus is only on the name. Only on the name of the God. And because their focus is in the name of the God, they lose the focus of the matter which is within them. And as they lose the focus of the matter within them, you know, they lose the matter altogether. That means when they are completely, you know, when their focus is complete in the, in the name of the God, then, you know, the matter is completely vacant. They get rid of the matter completely. And when they get rid of the matter, then they, they get rid of this name also. They don't, need, they don't need this name. So then they become separate from the name and they become pure. And that is how they attain the self-knowledge. Okay. So these are, these are some way. But the, 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 but the best way is what I've seen is trying to always remember who I am. If you can't do this, there's another way. You know, remain aware about this breathing. Breathing. When you breathe in and you breathe out, you are unaware about that. You know, the, 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 basic, the basic thing of our life, the basic thing, you know, if, if this breathing is not there, we are dead. The only person who does not breathe is a dead man. So, you know, we breathe all the time but we are not aware about our breathing. So, you know, the way, there's another way by which I can get rid of all the matters present in my mind is by being aware about this breathing in and breathing out. Just, you know, if you take some time out of your busy schedule, sit down somewhere, you know, when you are completely distracted, when you're very, very, you know, impatient, when you're very, very, you know, like, you know, very distracted, you need some peace, you need some air, you need some space. Just give yourself space by sitting somewhere and just breathe in and breathe out and just be aware that you are breathing in and breathing out. Just breathe in and breathe out by knowing that you are breathing in and breathing out. You will see within no time you have become, you have become quiet, you have become calm. And not only that, you will, you know, you will discover a huge space within yourself. The space is not outside. The space that we, we want is not outside. You know, there's this space inside. Infinite space is there within. There's this infinite space within. You can have this infinite space within just by, you know, by being aware about this breathing. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out slowly. Slowly breathe in and slowly breathe out. Be aware about your breathing and within no time you will see that you have become very, very quiet, very, very peaceful, very, very calm. Okay? So these are the ways by which you can keep yourself purified. Shaucha. That is keeping the body and the mind always pure and clean. This is the first, you know, component of, of, uh, of, niya, uh, of uh, yama, niyama, niyama. The next one is shaucha. The next one is swadhaya. Swadhaya. You know, most of the spiritual texts, most of the yogic texts will say swadhaya means self-study. Like when you, when you study, that is called swadhaya. You know, if you see, you know, you know, nine out of ten books, they will say swadhyaya means self-study. But swadhyaya means, swa means self. Adhyaya, you know, adhyaya means to meditate, to be aware about yourself, to meditate on the self, to meditate on this I. Where is this I? 
try to find out where is this I. Everything that you have is yours. Me, mine, mine, my mind, my intellect, my ego, my body, my head, my stuff, my, you know, my thoughts. Everything is my. Where is that I? I don't, I don't find that I. Everything that I see is mine. So try to find out where, you know, where is this I? Where is this I? So Swadhyay means try to finding out that I, meditating on that I, concentrating on that I, focusing on that I. Try to focus where is that I, which is the governor, which is the one which governs everything. I say I, I, where is that I? Which one is that I? Which one is that I? Try to find out that. You will see, you know, whatever you know is not I. Whatever you have known is not I at all. This I is always unmanifested. It's beyond. It's beyond. It is never manifested. Though you use this word I, I the most in your day, you cannot find this I at all. The only thing that you will find is mine, mine, mine. But where is this I? It's not there. So try to focus on that I, try to find that I. Which one is that I? Where is that I? Search it. If you can't do it, ask your heart. Because there is where all the answers are. There are answers. Answers are not in the textbook. There are no answers outside in the external universe. There's no answer. All the answers is there within your heart. You know, in the Upanishads, it says, Vidyate Ridaya Granthi Chindante Sarva Sankshaya. The moment, you know, the moment you break, the moment you break the shackles of ignorance, which is within your heart, that is the point when you become free from all confusions. That is the point when you become free from all, you know, all ignorances. You don't have any confusion. You don't have any doubt. You are, you are completely aware who you are. So this is also happening within your heart. So the heart knows everything. If you want to search yourself, the best person who can help you in this search is your own heart. Ask yourself. Who am I? Oh, hum. Oh, hum. Who am I? Where is that I? Ask yourself. You'll find that answer. Show hum. Show hum. I am that. I am that. Tak Tomasi. You are that. Aham Brahmashmi. I am this Brahman. I am this Brahman. I am this Atman. I am this knowledge, I am this consciousness, I am this light, I am this existence, I am this bliss. I am this peace, I am this liberation, I am this truth, I am this love, I am this, I am ease. I am that which is, which is. The thing that is, is me. The thing which is not. The thing is, which is not, is this body, is this world. The thing that, that exists, the thing that is, is me. So ask yourself, who am I? So Swadhyay means meditating on the self. Who am I? Try to find out. Try to find out. You know, take some time off in the day either in the morning or in the evening, spend some time with yourself. That is called satsanga. Spending time with yourself means spending time with the divine. We spend time with our friends. We spend time with our loved ones. But most of the time, while spending time with them, we become distracted. We don't spend time with ourselves. We always spend time with others. Try to spend time with yourself. You are the 
you are your best friend you are atmaneva bandhur atma atmaneva ripur atmana at you know your best friend is yourself and the best enemy also is you your mind if you are friends with your mind if you do everything that your mind says your mind is your greatest enemy and if your mind does everything that you say if the mind does everything that you want that mind is your best friend so spend time with yourself be yourself be yourself don't look outside don't seek outside it's not possible for the whole day at least for some time in the day 5 minutes 5 minutes you know disconnect yourself from the entire world don't need anything switch off your mobile phone switch off everything all relationship everything you know all all your associations with this external world just tell yourself i want to be with myself that is the greatest satsanga that is the greatest you know that is the greatest greatest you know time that you are going to spend the most quality time that you are going to spend with yourself be with yourself swadhaya swadhaya so the second one is swadhaya be with yourself find yourself focus in yourself meditate in yourself if you can't ask yourself who am who am i just ask it ask and wait for the answer just ask who am i tell me tell me who am i but this you know the seeking should be unto you it not it it should not be outside to some person nobody can tell you who you are you yourself can tell yourself who you are your heart can tell yourself who you are so you know tell ask yourself who am i and wait for the answer you will you will receive the answer you will receive the response your heart will respond to you your heart will speak to you your heart will speak to you and you will see that the most beautiful person in this world is you the most amazing person if there is most amazing person ever existing in this world that is you yourself there is nobody more beautiful than you there's nobody more amazing than you in the entire world the only person is you ashcharyavat paschati kashidenam in the bhagavad gita it says a person who knows himself a person who have seen himself a person who has realized himself he sees himself to be amazing ashcharyavat paschati kashidena he says that wow i am the most amazing person in this universe i am the most beautiful person in this universe i am the most amazing person in this universe ashcharyavat paschati kashidena then ashcharyavat ashcharyavat badati tathaiva chanya and the others the others say that i am the most amazing others which can explain which can express they express in this way that the most amazing entity in this entire world is me myself i am the one i am the one the most amazing entity in this world ashcharyavat paschati kashchidenam ashcharyavat paschati ashcharyavat vadati tathaiva chanya ashcharyavat shrinot ashcharya vat shrinoti ashcharyavat paschati tathaiva chanya ashcharyavat vadati tathaiva chanya ashcharyavat ashcharyavat shinoti uh, ash ashcharyavat paschati ashcharyavat paschati uh, paschidenam ashcharyavat shinot ashcharyavat bhadati tathaiva channa ashcharyavat shinoti tathaiva tathaiva channam and there are somebody and the others and the others they when they hear about it when they hear about it when they hear about themselves the others when they hear about themselves they hear themselves to be you know amazement when they hear who they are 
they have not known they have not known but they have just hear they, 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 they have just heard about it they have heard that you are the most amazing person they have heard that you are the truth you are the divine you are the bliss you are the infinite when they hear about it they express themselves to be wow i am the most amazing and though they hear about it though they hear about it they cannot know them in that way the the way by which we know this world they can become that they can feel them in the heart when we see things in this world we see things in this world by being separate from that i'm seeing you i'm seeing you but when i'm seeing you i am separate from you but here in the in, in spiritual world when you will see god when you see the divine when you see yourself you will become that so there is difference between spiritual seeing and material seeing when we see ourselves in this world we see when you see things in this world there's a difference between us and that person that place that thing but when you see everything in the spiritual plane you become that you become one with that okay so swadhyaya meditate on yourself then santosha santosha means satisfaction being satisfied in the state where i am when we when we when we listen to this satisfied we think if i'm satisfied with what i am i cannot grow no it's not that you know you will grow when i'm satisfied with this point it does not mean that i am not going to step forward with every step that i i put in this world be satisfied with that be grounded don't be impatient don't be anxious don't try to run away don't try to run away you know every step is going to take you towards the divine towards the infinite if you have any material goal also then also be very assured about yourself be very assured about yourself put keep your keep your feet in the ground don't don't hurry don't be in a hurry don't be in a haste don't be in a, you know don't don't be don't be anxious nothing is going to happen you know nothing is going to happen the way you want it to happen everything is a step by step process so when you are you are putting a step forward try to be completely convinced about it try to be completely be assured about it try to be completely happy about it be happy always in every situation whether you are in peace or in disgrace be happy because everything is the same though you know apparently we see that you know apparently we see that you know this this uh, this happiness and sorrow are two different things but if you look at you know both of them happiness and sorrow you will see in happiness there is an element of sorrow if you just try to see it in a very minute way carefully i am very happy but i am happy means i am only seeing that part which is making me happy try to see the entire scenario you will see there are many things about which you are not happy but because you are you know very very narrow you know your your vision is very very narrow you can only see that part which is making you happy try to see the entire scenario you will see there are many things which does not make you happy so in happiness there is unhappiness also and in unhappiness when you are not happy when you are not happy try to also see it very properly try to see the entire scenario wait don't run away most of the time when we are you know when we are not happy when we are sad we try to run away from that we want to close our eyes and just you know leave don't do that stay there and look at it look at the entire scenario very carefully you will see there are many things which will make you happy there are many things here though there are something 
about which you are not happy but there are many many other things which are present in this entire scheme which is really making you happy so unhappiness is not unhappiness also it's a mixture of happiness and unhappiness because we we can only you know we are so narrow that we can only look at that unhappy aspect of that entire scenario so that makes us unhappy so don't be you know don't be happy or unhappy try to look at everything you will see each and every step that you put everything is the same everything is one everything is one and when you are you know when you become more and more aware about each and every step you see in that oneness there is the presence of the divine so every step is the step in the divine not towards the divine though we say that we are stepping towards the divine but when we see it very carefully when we see it very carefully we see it's not a step towards divine every step in fact is the step in the divine and that is why this you know santosha satisfaction contentment on santosha means contentment contented contentment this contentment plays an important part in our in our life not only spiritual but also material in our home in our office in our in our you know in our social social you know circles in our spiritual development in our spiritual pursuit you will see everywhere this contentment is playing a very vital role so always remain contented in in every aspect of your life okay so the third point is contentment fourth one fourth one is called tapas tapa tapa in english is called austerity so whenever we talk about austerity whenever we talk about austerity we think we think austerity means to work hard hardship to you know to to make very very difficult difficult steps but tapas is not like that like you know there are athletes athletes in america america has produced very you know one of the finest athletes so you know we see in the in the olympics that these are like 14 year 14 year you know girl winning a gold medal in gymnastics from america isn't it we have seen many many girls small small girls you know they are winning gold medals how they do it how they do it they do it with hard work what is that hard work you know they have a goal in front of them i have to achieve this this one they have a goal in front of them and they prepare themselves mentally and physically according to that goal that is called tapas tapas or austerity means you know preparing yourself mentally or physically in any you know in any goal you have in your life like in india we have a we have a you know we have we have a game called cricket i am not sure whether you have heard about this you know game or not cricket so there are like many good players you know so these players they earn a lot of money they are like gods in india you know they we are we kind of worship them but they have they have to they have they have a very very difficult life very very strict discipline life you know they they can't eat properly they can eat you know tasty food they don't eat pizzas they don't eat pastas they don't eat, they don't eat oils you know like very very focused in always in the world they do so that is also called tapas that is also called austerity we know about einstein we know about mary curie you know she she had you know discovered you know, this uranium so while she was discovering uranium she had cancer she suffered from cancer and she died but she did not give up she did not give up she dedicated her complete life in the search of this you know radioactive radioactive material particle for the betterment of human being so this is called austerity 
it's not only in physical you know in spiritual in in spiritual life it is in each and every life it's in every in each and every aspect of life we need this spirit of austerity spirit of tapas within us any goal we can have but we should always be prepared to you know prepare ourselves to attain that goal physically and mentally the problem with us is that we have a lot of you know goals we have a lot of you know like uh, this aspirations but we don't want to work hard and that is where we can't achieve and we you know become and we become rejected and ultimately we become you know depressed but the one who can work hard who is you know who is prepared to work hard they are the one who are the achievers they are the one who are you know the success the they attain success so tapas also is a very very important aspect of our life and the last one and the last one in this you know uh, in this niyama is called ishwar pranidhana while doing everything while working very hard while doing everything perfect while doing everything perfect to achieve the goal ultimately devoting your mind devoting your heart into god or into humanity is called ishwar pranidhan if you if you have you know this that whatever i am doing i am doing not for myself but for this humanity but for this world but for the betterment of this world that is called ishwar pranidhan and that is where you can attain excellence if you work very hard if you do everything that that has been said in in this you know in this uh, niyama but you are doing it for yourself if you do it for yourself for your own cause to satisfy your own needs somewhere or the other you are going to lose you are going to lose you cannot become a good human being somewhere or the other you are going to lose you will not attain that success but in every aspect if you keep this that i want this i want to jump i want to attain this not for myself but for the entire humanity but for the world as a whole but for but for god for this you know for this divine that is called the real achievement and this is the fifth component of you know of niyama that is ishwar pranidhan dedicating everything to the lord to the feet of humanity okay so this is it do we have time more time uh, yuri yes we have 7 yeah. minutes okay so any question you have i have a question can you hear me yeah okay yeah. so when you are talking about doing something for the benefit of others that is what will actually help you um realize what it is you're trying to uh achieve right so because i think sometimes is is difficult to separate yourself from wanting something you know and you're wanting it and you it's easier just to think of yourself you know and just how to improve yourself yeah, yeah. in this game that um and you kind of lose sight of that you know the, the higher goal so i think that that's a really good point to bring up because it is easy to just kind of forget that because the ego comes into play exactly you know the mind we have this mind we cannot deny the the presence of mind this mind always creates desires now this mind is an individual entity it cannot create desire for others it cannot desire to it cannot create desires which can fulfill the aspira aspirations of others it will only try to fulfill the aspirations of itself so you know 
we have this component always within us where you know there will be desire for our own individual benefit okay so this is what we need to be very aware of that you know there is something always in my house which will always want me to bring you know to become small to become to to shrink so knowing this particular thing you know that because i have this so here you know what to do is you know the basic intention of every action should always be for others when i keep this basic intention you know when i keep this basic intention that this my intention of work my intention of hardship my in intention of any 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 you know any 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 endeavor is for for the for the humanity as a whole then i kind of block that tendency of the mind to always look for things for its own self you know so as i keep doing it i see that my mind also starts to get trained and it starts to you know work with me at tandem it starts to you know it also synchronizes itself with my own nature with my own energy and i can see and i see that my mind also becomes you know the way i think the way i i i i want i intend to do the work okay so in the bhagavad gita you know in the bhagavad gita while doing the job while doing actions it is it has said something very clearly we you know whenever we do any action action in sanskrit is called karma now when you talk about karma in the west you say that karma means the past action karma does not mean the past action only karma also means this action that you do now like the simple simple action brushing the teeth cooking food going to the office these are all karmas anything that you do is karma okay now why do we perform karma we perform karma to fulfill our needs so that means we have this unfulfillment within us and to fulfill that we do this karma i'm going here i'm going there i'm talking to my friends every action if you see very closely you will see every action is just to fulfill my own needs to fulfill my own desires to make me happy okay but does it make me happy that is another question it never makes me happy nothing makes me happy so here it says that we are actually not doing the right kind of action and because we are not doing the right kind of action always we are having adverse results i need something i get something and i get something and i become very disappointed why did i get this i did not intend this why i'm getting this it's not about your intention it's about your execution of what you are doing so here krishna is you know in the bhagavad gita krishna is 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 telling us how to work now i don't know whether you have come to india or not did you come to india ever cherry have you ever come to india have you ever been to india ever uh, no no okay so do you know anything about this yagya this fire ceremony that we do anybody so in the you know we you know about vedas no we have vedas so vedas they they teach us to work how we should work so they teach us a a basic aspect of to to teach us how to work they they make us go through a ceremony and that ceremony is called a fire ceremony after this session you can just you know type yagya y a g n a yagya okay wait um vedic yagya okay and then you can uh, you can see what what it is it's like a fire ceremony the fire is there and they're putting you know some some medicine some oblations there some offerings there with a mantra now this fire ceremony you know is done for others like either it is done for a, a lord for god 
or for humanity. Mm -hmm. And this fire ceremony cannot be done for fulfilling your own needs. When you do the fire ceremony, you have to do it only for others. Like, you know, in India, we don't have, in some parts, we don't have, we have droughts. We don't have rain. So there is this fire ceremony by which rain comes. Now, when the rain comes, it doesn't come from me. It comes from everybody. So when I'm doing this fire ceremony, I'm not doing it for myself. I am doing it for a, for the humanity at large. Okay. So, you know, in this way, all the, you know, all the aspirations that we have, which we cannot attain through our physical, you know, physical pursuit, physical endeavor, you know, we, there is this fire ceremonies by which we can attain them. But while doing this, it makes us very, you know, it makes us very, very, you know, very, very, you know, it cautions us that it should not, it should not be for your own self. It should be for others. So this yagya is a exercise or is a ritual which is meant only for others where you cannot be a party. Your own desires, your own aspirations cannot be a party. It should be for others. So that is called yagya. Now Krishna says that yagyata karmano anyatra lokoyam karma bandhana. It says, whenever you are performing any karma, karma means action, like any action, every action, each and every action, every action has an inter intention. Always keep the intention to be for others, like a yajna. Like when you are performing the yajna, you cannot have, you know, the intention of fulfilling your desire this intention should be for others, for universal. It should be a universal aspiration. So in each and every aspect of your karma, try to have this, you know, try to have this uh, aspiration that every karma that I'm doing is not for me, but for the world. But for the world. I am eating. I am eating. Why? I'm eating to feed my body so that this body can serve others. I'm not eating only to enjoy, only to full, you know, only to self gratification. No. Mm -hmm. Yes, I need a, I need a healthy life. I need a healthy body. I need a healthy body. I need a sound, you know, sound life. But this life should be for others. It should not be only to enjoy my, you know, enjoy for myself. It should not be like that. If I do this, then what I'm doing is I'm just inviting, I'm just inviting, you know, negativity. I'm inviting, you know, sadness. I'm inviting, whenever I'm doing anything for myself, I'm just inviting adversities. And when I'm, whenever I'm doing things for others, when I'm opening up to the universe, I'm opening to the light of the universe. The light enters into my heart. So bliss, peace. Happiness, they all enter. You know, the thing that we need, the thing that we need, they start to come to us in abundance. In abundance. And that is why it says, Yagyatha karmano anyatra. You know, any karma that you, that you do, that you perform, any karma that you perform should be performed only in the spirit of yagya. Like a yagya. It should not be for yourself. And if you don't do this, anyatra means if you just if you if you do the contrary, you know, if you do the contrary, this is the this is the this is the rule. If you just you know, if you just you know twist it, no, no, I am I am not going to follow this. I will have my own way. You if you twist it, what is happening is going to happen. Lokoyam karma bandhana. You are going to face, you are going to face all the effects of bondage. Of this world, you are going to be binded in this world. You are going to be suffocated, and that is what people have, people experience. In spite of you know having a lot of money, in spite of having a lot of you know achievements, everybody is suffocated. They don't have space, and they don't don't know what where they have gone wrong. This is where they have gone wrong. This is where they have gone wrong. They have worked hard. They really worked hard. They have worked very honestly. But I have done everything so hard. I've done everything so honestly, 
Why I am feeling this aversion? This is because you have done everything for yourself. Because you have not dedicated everything for others. Because your intention was not for others. It was only for yourself. And that is what has brought you in, into this point of suffocation. You, you just see, you know, you just see. See the whole world. Try to see the you know, life of each and every person. All the successful person. Jackson, you have in America, there are so many successful persons. Just see the life. You will see everybody is suffocating. They have everything. They can go and enjoy the life. Nobody does it. Nobody cannot. Somewhere they have just, they're, they're caged. Where are they caged? They are not caged in this world. They are caged in their own, you know, way of karma. They have done the karmas in a wrong way. That's it. And if you really want to, you know, live a life full of, full of happiness, full of freedom, this is the way. Yagyata, do everything for others. Do everything for others. Loko yam karma. And if you don't do, then you are going to, you know, face all this bondage. And then, then Krishna says, Tadatta karma konteya mukta sangha samachara. Krishna says, Oh, the son of Kunti. Arjuna was the son of Kunti. He says, Oh, the son of Kunti. Just do every karma like yagya. Like yagya. And become free from all attachments. Now, all attachment means attachment from your individual aspirations. Attachment from, from, from your individual, you know, selfishness. Attachment from, from your individual selfishness. Attachment from your individual, you know, aspirations. Mukta Sangha. Try to be free from your individual aspirations. Try to understand the, the, the law. This is the law. This is the natural law. Follow the natural law. The, the trees, they grow for others. The sun, they do for the, the shine for others. The moon, she shines for others. Clouds, they rain for others. This is nature. This is nature. This is how everything thrives. The, the, the earth, she grows plants for others. She does not she doesn't need anything. She does not ask for anything. The, the rivers, they give water for others. You also have to do it for accordingly. If you do the opposite, then you are going to degrowth. You are, you are going to become a, a river, you know, a dried river. That's it. You cannot reach the ocean. You will dry up. That's all. You will become a tree, but without any fruits. Without any fruits, without any shadow. You have a big tree, but you don't have any shadow. You don't have any fruits. What is the use of this, this tree? Okay, so this is the thing, you know. The, it says, Tadatta karma konteya mukta sangha and samachara. Because this work is only intended for others, it does not mean that you will not be you know, you will not be uh, like, uh, you will not be sincere to them. Because they are intended for others, you should perform each and every action with utmost sincerity. You cannot, you know, you cannot just, uh, you know, just say that, well, this is for others. And that is why I don't need to be sincere. No. You need to be very sincere because this is for others. And while you are doing things for others, you are not doing things for others. You are actually doing things for yourself. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So today we stop here and we're going to, uh, you know, meet in the next session uh, in the next week. It, it has been a pleasure. Now that now this group is becoming slowly, slowly, we are becoming, you know, intact. So we will have great sessions, you know, greater sessions also. Because, you know, once we, you know, keep talking with each other and keep meeting, you know, then it becomes this, the energy becomes, you know, more familiar and, uh, you know, it becomes more cohesive and, uh, you know, the knowledge flows very well, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Have a, a nice good day. day. Have a good day, guys. Thank you. Bye.